As the colors change to full, the shows just keep getting brighter on Global Voice Broadcasting. Shows about everything that matters to you. From love, living, and life. If you're talking about it, we're talking about it this fall. On Global Voice Broadcasting. Don't miss a second. I highly recommend Miss Hicks. Her books, her CDs are encouraging. I bought her book, The Hill to Climb. Uh, she's a very inspirational speaker. And I look forward to one day being able to work with her. Your power lies within you. Let it loose. Aspiration, inspiration, motivation, edification, determination. These are the keys of life success brought to you by none other than award-winning author, motivational lecturer, business consultant, and much more as she gets you aimed to your purpose. And now, ladies and gentlemen, young and elder, from Hollywood to the entire world, here is your host of Aim to Purpose, the radio show, Louise Hicks, along with her co-host, yours truly, Kenan Wesley Mason. Hello, world. How is everybody today? Hope you all are doing well. Welcome once again to Aim to Purpose, the radio show, and I am your host, Louise Hicks. And I'm your co-host, Kenan Mason, and I want to say... As always, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone listening and watching Aim to Purpose, the radio show from everywhere around the world. We thank you for tuning in to Global Voice Broadcasting, and we're going to bring you another exciting Aim to Purpose show for your viewing and listening and educational pleasure. And yes, today is... uh very dynamic, amazing, informative show that we want to share with you. And we have an in-studio guest today, too. Yep. And we love having our guests in studio. So today we're going to talk about saving our girls. Why is it why it still takes a village? Mm-hmm. And uh, go ahead, Ken. Y- yeah, our, our, our special guest is Naja Roberts. And the title is, again, Saving Our Girls, Why It Still Takes a Village. And if you want to chime in, as always, you can call in from anywhere around the world, 1-323-522-5482. From anywhere around the world, 1-323-522-5482. And we just have a few things we want to talk with you about uh, today before we bring on uh, our special guest. Um, One is uh, cyber attacks. And uh, I usually share with you something about our our weekend or some informative information. And uh, the weekend, uh, there were some cyber attacks on Facebook. And I kind of wanted to bring these to your attention. And one was um, one was on a guest that I had last week, Miss Brittany Cara. And we talked about uh, vaccines and uh, her book, the about foods and how the foods are really some of them are our worst enemy and we have to be cautious about what we're putting into our bodies injecting as well as ingesting into our bodies and this attack this um, past weekend was about discrimination apparently Brittany had written a very informative uh, post on Facebook about vaccines and what they're doing and she had uh, in fact I'm going to show you the um, I think I have the post here Uh, not the post but I have the picture that seemed to have created some controversy here can you uh, see that okay there we go and this picture seems to have uh, created some controversy on um, Facebook because some I guess one person, I should say, because I'm gonna not going to uh, misrepresent other people, but one person felt that it was a slap in the face to black people. Now, I didn't feel that way because discrimination in any form is discrimination. And that's one of the problems that we're having in the universe is this divide and conquer strategy where the masses are being pitted against each other 
And that has to stop because if it doesn't stop, we will not come to a resolution for all of the problems that we are having. Now, the point that Brittany was getting across is discrimination in any form is discrimination. And she just happened to use the restroom situation where once upon a time with the Jim Crow laws in the United States, blacks were directed to one water fountain and whites were directed to another water fountain. Now, I'm very familiar with this because I'm 60, I will be 65 in a few months and I live this life. And any form of discrimination is something that we need to get rid of. And all she was doing was showing that in the future, it appears that unvaccinated children will be discriminated against when they go to see a doctor. Now, mind you, the money is not discriminated against. I don't see any signs that say we will not take your green money or your change, but we're going to sit you to the side and let you stay over here and the vaccinated children stay over here. And that is totally discrimination Yeah. because no one has proved to this point that unvaccinated children are spreading any diseases. Because if that was the case, people like myself, the baby boomers who haven't been vaccinated in 100 years, and that's figuratively speaking, we would be spreading diseases all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. And the unvaccinated children are the ones that are being ridiculed for doing something different or their parents doing something different for them. And the uh, and the uh, quote healthy children as opposed to an uh, a vaccinated child, uh, it, there is separatism, just like what you just showed in this picture here. Yes, the separatism of people of different skin color versus the separatism of today here, the the talk of vac uh, children that are vaccinated versus children that are unvaccinated. It's separatism. They're putting children against each other. You can't come near me because you haven't had your vaccines yet. And my mom tells me I can't be near you. That's separatism amongst children. And it's ridiculous because discrimination in any form is wrong. And that's the point of the picture. And for those who uh, didn't realize or recognize discrimination against blacks who have been who've had the most atrocities uh, perpetrated upon us than any ethnicities in this country, uh, it's a good thing that you're understanding now what discrimination is all about and what it's really like. It's just a different type of discrimination, but uh, the truth will set you yeah, free. It's a, and the discrimination is against everyone. It's not, in this case here, it's against everyone, all children, whether you're black, white, Latin, Asian, Native American, it doesn't matter. The discrimination is all across the board. And, and it really is. And the person that wrote that um, that post felt that black people should be really angry. And that's I don't feel that way. And I'm not an angry black person. I think the post depicted what it was supposed to depict, that discrimination in any form is wrong. Hmm. And that's that was the point of the whole post that Brittany uh, Cara put out on the uh, Facebook post there. And also uh, the other thing I wanted to briefly talk about is uh, mainstream media black lives matter it's really ridiculous all the things that we are hearing about this movement being a hate group when it's not a hate group black lives do matter all lives do matter however the black lives specifically is about the hate against black people per se that has been more perpetrated in especially in in this day and age it seems that discrimination has gotten worse i mean we had a civil rights movement that was passed uh, with the civil rights bill in 64 i believe and things seem to be getting worse and somebody had written uh i think it was bill uh o'reilly saying he's going to stamp out black lives matter of course, on Fox. And there was another, some sheriff out in uh, near Atlanta or somewhere uh, also said something about the Black Lives Matter being a hate group. And for clarification, that is not a hate group. The only hate that Black Lives Matter, and somebody put it so eloquently on Facebook, they said, um, 
comparing your plight to that of Africa. No, I'm sorry. I'm reading the wrong one. Uh, you know what? Damn right. It is a hate group. And I'm going to clarify that in a minute. Hate our kids getting shot holding toy guns while folks push for less gun control and more open carry laws. Hate getting choked while already on the ground and handcuffed. Hate laws requiring state photo ID to vote, then closing every <coughs> office in areas where African Americans are the majority. And on second thought, it can't be a hate group because unlike every other hate group, the Black Lives Matter group has never choked, lynched, or shot the people they hate. I think that pretty much sums it up. Why Black Lives Matter. And we really need to get an understanding. Just briefly, I saw a TED talk from a Nigerian woman and it was entitled, The Danger of a Single Story. And she so eloquently stated how we judge without knowing. And I wish everyone could watch that TED talk. And again, the title was The Danger of a Single Story. I don't recall her name, but she was a young Nigerian woman who really brought it home about judgment. We judge people without even knowing who they are and what they represent. And that's something that until we stop that, we're going to continue with this. And uh, the other thing I want to briefly talk about is mental illness. Uh, I did a PSA last week, and it's on YouTube, and I hope you go out and watch it. It's called Go Mental, the number four change, and it's on my YouTube channel, Aimed to uh, Purpose Radio, A-I-M-E-D, -A the number two, Purpose Radio. And it's called, again, Go Mental, number four change. And uh, we must recognize that the pharmaceutical drugs is an epidemic in this country. Even the CDC has admitted that this is an epidemic, and that's the government, but they aren't doing anything about it because the pharmaceutical industry provides so much money to the lobbyists and the wealthy to keep pharmaceutical drugs going strong in this country. And we have to do something about it. We need reform. I, I wrote my Senator Dianne Feinstein of the state of California a letter, and I got back a bunch of nonsense. I called them on it, and then they wrote me another letter. I asked for a federal investigation. They didn't mention anything about that, so I'm going to write them again. And that's what we have to keep doing, because these politicians act like we are a bunch of apathetic idiots. And until we start stepping up to the plate as the masses of people and come together for resolutions, they're going to continue to do this to us. So let's wake up America and let's do something together to stop all of this chaos in America because it's perpetrated by the elite, it's driven by money, but I tell you what, they may have deep pockets, but deep, there is no competition for deep minds. And that's what this program is all about, helping all of us to reach our highest calling and to come together and learn about different cultures and the diversity that brings us together and learn to embrace each other. And I didn't say tolerate each other because who wants to be tolerated? We need to learn to embrace one another. And now Ken has something to say because I think I pretty much said what <laughs> I wanted to say. <laughs> well, yeah, last week I gave a... Uh, a challenge because speaking of mainstream media and big pharma, the pharmaceutical industry, I gave a challenge because October is where we acknowledge Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I just found out last week that uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month is also acknowledged in South Africa, where we have uh, uh, some of our guests have been from South Africa. We had... Um, Dr. Uh, Gorba, uh, yeah, we, yeah, the uh, the founder of the, the Satma, Satma Awards. Award. Uh, so now we find out that uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month is also acknowledged in uh, in South Africa as well. And I gave a challenge to everyone. This is a global broadcast, so I gave a challenge to everyone that is willing, because. In mainstream media, we're always told every year that there is no cure for cancer. 
Cancer is a $300 billion profit business. So if they wanted a cure for cancer or if we find out that there are cures for cancer and there are globally, all of your foundations such as American Cancer Society, Susan Coleman Foundation, they would all be out of business because healthy people wouldn't need these foundations that raise money for cancer research. And there's been a war on cancer since 1972. And I talked about that last week. <laughs> yes. So the challenge once again this week, and I'll be brief, say no to chemo challenge. And I gave all the reasons why last week. Number two, get true information about radiation. And I explained that as well. Number three, the perjury of cancer surgery, uh, the purging and uh, 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 different surgical procedures that take place, biopsies and what have you. And number four, feel good emotions and live nutrition heighten innate intuitions. We all have that inner voice that we rarely listen to that can guide us into our greatest greatness. Start listening to the voice within. People call it uh, the, the voice of God or their God voice or, uh, or the voice within. We all have it and it's available to us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Start getting information. Start getting truth and uh, start implementing truth onto yourselves because you can't uh, help anyone uh, eradicate, if you will, this symptom uh, if you don't do things for yourself first. There are many causes for cancer, which uh, we rarely hear about the causes, uh, because when you find the cause, you also simultaneously find the cure. So the challenge is to get true information. And because we're not a mainstream media type of radio show, we can give all sorts of information freely without the backlash. So right. again, the challenge, say no to chemo, get in true, uh, true information about radiation, the perjury of cancer surgery, and feel good emotions, and live nutrition, heightened innate intuition. We all have it. Get the information. Uh, we see it every day. We see it in the NFL. It's Monday. You see the players with the pink ribbons. Uh, you, you see it in all your commercials this month. Get information. We've all know someone uh, that either was diagnosed with cancer or someone you know that has it in the family, friends, acquaintances, because it's all over the place. Get information. Get the truth. It is vital. It's vital. It's out there. Vital to your health. So by all means, the experts that are telling you all of these things, why are we the sickest country in the world, civilized country in the world? Think about it. And, Use and your own mind. That's right. Deep minds, uh, should I say deep pockets, cannot compete with deep minds. And since the topic is saving our girls, uh, this is a great way to get it started with our guests. Absolutely. Because uh, talking about health and and uh, uh, fitness and mental health matters. All of this ties in to what our guest today is going to inform us yes. on and a whole lot more. Or domestic violence, since this month is also Domestic Violence Month. So with that being said, we're going to take a commercial break, and then we're going to come back and introduce you to Miss Nyjah. Nyjah, that's my <laughs> granddaughter, is Nyjah. Nyjah Roberts. Yes, Nyjah <laughs> Roberts is our guest, and we will be right back. Don't you go nowhere. This edition of Aim to Purpose, the radio show, is brought to you by L. Hicks Consulting Services. When you want the best in business coaching, life coaching, or perhaps your organization, business, or company is in need of a dynamic speaker for an upcoming workshop or seminar, contact Louise Hicks for L. Hicks Consulting Services at 1-562-562. 310-1495. From anywhere around the world, that's 1-562-310-1495. 
1495. For more information about Louise Hicks and her consulting services, visit her website at www.louisehicks.biz. Again, that's www.louisehicks.biz. Or call 1-562-310-1495. L. Hicks Consulting Services, where professionalism is top priority. Hello, world, again. We are back again. I'm Louise Hicks, your host of Aim for Purpose Radio Show, along with my son and co host, Kenan Wesley Mason. And now we're going to go ahead and before we introduce our guest, we're going to show you a video clip, and then we're going to go ahead and introduce our guest to you. Our girls are in a 911 situation. Today, or any day for that matter, online, you can see our young girls and women displaying disgusting behavior that has been posted by another amused and excited person. The fights, the brawls, and the knockouts have become entertainment for our youth. Driving down the street, it has become normal to see girls with blue and green hair, butts and breasts hanging out, tattoos on faces, necks, and arms. We hear young mothers in the stores with profanity billowing from their mouth, directed at their young children. Respect for themselves and others has long been forgotten as they call their own child stupid, or in some cases, a stupid bee or little n-word. Every fiber of our children's being is being compromised and corrupted by what they see on TV, people around them, and the images at their fingertips. As we at NCNW View Park Section work tirelessly to change and impact the mindset of our girls and women by going into communities and schools on a daily basis, we ask you to join forces with us to save ourselves, sisters, because they are raising the next generation. Girls can't be what they can't see. Give today. Every dollar counts. Okay, that was great. Now, I love that little girl with her hairstyle. She's so cute. <laughs> Let's go ahead and introduce our guest. Yes, Naja Janine Roberts was born and raised in Los Angeles. She earned her bachelor's in criminal justice administration from Bethune-Cookman College and a master's degree in business administration. Naja is married with two children and six total in the blended family. Naja has an extensive background in the nonprofit arena. In 2001, she founded Family Knots Express, where she transported hundreds of children to visit their incarcerated parents. She received numerous awards and recognition for her work in the community. Naja has worked on the board of several nonprofits over the years, such as National Association of Brothers and Sisters Inside and Out, Black Star University and Friends Outside. In 2011, Naja joined her husband, Dimitri, as a financial advisor with Transamerica. The two are known in the industry as the dynamic duo, and they quickly earned the position broker. Being a financial advisor for the last three years, she continues to see the impact that lack of knowledge plays in the community. She prides herself in giving free financial education to all that want to learn. Naja is active in the Order of the Eastern Star and is currently the newly elected president of the National Council of Negro Women View Park Section. Under the National Council of Negro Women View Park Section, Naja has adopted the Save Our Sisters to program, in which she has been blessed to nurture and get it running effectively in the Los Angeles area. This program addresses the relevant issues that African American girls face today, such as self-love and care, cyberbullying, domestic violence, fitness, mental health, STDs, image, personal development, sex trafficking, and job preparedness. Saving Our Girls is first on the list, and Naja works tirelessly from sunup to sundown to ensure that our future looks brighter than it does right now. Let's give a warm, aimed to purpose welcome to our special in-studio guest, Miss Naja Roberts. Hello, Naja. 
Georgia, and thank you so much for joining us and bringing us this vital information. Thank you because, for having me. Well, we need to talk about this. This is a subject matter that is overdue, I feel, and I'm really glad that we're going to bring it to the world because we are global, and uh, things that affect us here in America, believe it or not, it affects others across the globe as well. Absolutely. So what made you decide to take on this SOS, come to the rescue, to save our girls? Um, well, first, just a little bit of history about our organization. The National Council of Negro Women has been around, along, around a very long time. Uh, Dr. Mary McCobb Bethune is the founder of the organization in 1935. We celebrate this year our 80th anniversary. Mm -hmm. And uh, coming in at, as president of the View Park section, I really realized that looking at the structure, uh, our organization for the past 80 years, some my years uh the focus has changed a little bit we were a social organization at that time women were staying at home to care for the children and uh the men were out in the workplace and so the women kind of did this as a social thing but they also were supporting african-american women as they nurtured their communities and their children so coming in as president, I realized that there was an immediate need for us to move from a social organization to a social action organization. And in doing that, I just kind of took a step back to see how we could become relevant in our community. And I say relevant because a lot of organi organizations are doing a lot of things and they're chipping away at problems one disease at a time. If for lack of better words. And I just really felt like we have a collaboration of women within our communities that are doing so many great things. And if we could come together as a force collaborative, we could really make a huge impact in the Los Angeles area. Mm -hmm. And that is how we came about the Save Ourselves Sisters. Um, Save Ourselves Sisters is a National Council of Negro Women national program, but it's specifically geared around HIV and AIDS. So what I did was I, because the, the, the term is phenomenal, save ourselves sisters. It is just super relevant. So what I did was just add it uh, to the second power to it. So mm -hmm. you see save ourselves sisters too. Right. So we still deal with HIV and AIDS, but we have all the other aspects that come along with us. And we're not reinventing the wheel. These women are phenomenal. They have their own nonprofits. They already do what they do good. We're just doing it better collectively, mm -hmm. bringing it to the girls right. instead of trying to get the girls to come to us. Mm -hmm. and, and that is so vital. And I'm glad you mentioned the word collectively. Oh, yeah. Because that's key in everything <clears throat> we do. Because on this planet, whether anybody wants to admit it or not, we are all connected as human beings. Absolutely. And once we start thinking that way, we are a human race. We have different ethnicities, but we are a human race of people. And once we recognize that and we start working together collectively, we will see some progress because this divide and conquer strategy has to stop. And Absolutely. I'm so glad you're working on um, uh, this save ourselves sister and you said the two mm -hmm. <laughs> to the second Taking it power. to that <laughs> next power that's right the next power because yes. that's important and um, in the community tell us uh, something about how you're structuring this program in terms of self-love number one because I think that's a priority here because if you can't love yourself how can you love someone else well, that's a very interesting uh, thing to start this talk about because w actually when we got out into the community and we really started talking to the girls about the tattoos on their faces and how it might affect them uh, going to work and different things, we started to feel and hear from them as we began to build trust that they were not at all comfortable with who they were, what they look like. And as opposed to them trying to beautify themselves, a lot of the the a lot of the conflict going on within their mind was to put a tattoo or a piercing in their face to turn somebody off mm. from them and it just was baffling to me how they were just so twisted in their mindset where they didn't even care enough about themselves to beautify themselves but in fact made themselves in every way with the color hair the different things that they're doing make themselves unattractive so men weren't attracted to them or nobody would bother them going down the street. And it just, 
it just struck something in me that we have got to first get these girls to understand what their first their self love is and their self worth and um, looking for organizations that were sitting within our organizational membership that could bring out those things in the girls. That makes a lot of sense because if you don't love yourself and you don't get to the root of the problem, why are these girls feeling this way? What is causing them to lack the love oh, for yeah. themselves? There's always and a root to cause. Do this, there's a root cause to yes, everything. There's a root cause. And what I'm seeing, at, at first I was thinking it was more the gener the younger generation, but the more that we're in the community and we're talking to the parents, even my age, I just turned 45, the parents are not parenting. Mm -hmm. And we're That's thinking it. that uh, people <clears throat> really know how to parent when in fact they don't know how to parent. And I really start thinking really long and hard about what could have actually happened from the time my grandmother was in the house with my mother, mm -hmm. raising my mother. Right. Of course, they were at home. And so I think when our parents, and I'm talking about the parents that are in between 65 and 75, we were able to get into these jobs. And right. we began both mother and father working nine to outside. five outside of the home and the children were kind of sort of left to raise themselves and that would be my generation right. so latch we didn't key kid. right we were latchkey latch well, kids <laughs> my mother found a solution for latchkey because i was bust into the san fernando valley uh -huh. but the kids that were latchkey children um are my age right now and they really weren't taught and I'm not saying all, oh, I'm not making right, a general statement, but if you look at our inner city communities right now, it is the same yeah. from city to city right. to city. It is an atrocity yep. that is yes. happening with the mindset of the kids, which would be my children's age, mm -hmm. and the 20, 25, 30, and below. Um, and so I think our, in our communities, those of uh, uh, those of our parents who got these jobs with LA Unified School District, uh, yes. my dad worked for Aerospace, they got comfortable mm -hmm. and they kind of felt like they were, had arrived and they thought or felt like they were really instilling in us the things that were instilled in them, but they kind of, it, it got missed somewhere mm -hmm. in there and it got misconstrued. And so I really feel as growing up as a latchkey kid or even being on the bus and all the things that we experience in all the different neighborhoods, I'm just seeing the same thing where the where you think somebody knows how to parent, but they genu genuinely do not know how, and they say anything that comes out of their mouth. <laughs> right. They talk. They talk to the kids in a degrading way, yes, and they when do. you grow up being degraded, you just feel like that's normal, and so then you have a child and you do the same thing, and so I'm just seeing it so much. I've had parents my age that I've talked to about their daughters tell me, if you don't like how I'm raising her, come get the bee. I mean, it's just been those wow. types of things wow. that have just struck me like, um, I have to do this. I really feel like mm -hmm. God has purposed me to make sure that we get the message out and that we really begin to impact these families. And parenting is a huge part of this. It's huge. Yeah. And, and Naja being just about 65, you are so right. I'm not talking theory. I'm talking knowing. And we hear people, you know, oh, I got my PhD in this and my this and that. I mean, I got a PhD too. Mm -hmm. And my P I have a, a bachelor's really in social work, but I have a PhD in wisdom, experience, and our children were latchkey kids. I put my kids in daycare because I was a single parent and I knew I had to work and I did not want them to be left coming home from school until they got a, a little older anyhow. But there are kids mm -hmm. now walking home from school that are in grade school, f seven, eight, nine. I mean, the, the, it's, it's sad and we need to do something about it. Now, that's where black lives really matter and what black lives is all about as well is taking personal responsibility for parenting and like you said a lot of parents do not know how and that's why programs like what you're doing is so important because we have to save our parents in order to save our girls Absolutely. and we're just talking about girls today but when it's uh, the it, this steps up to a second power as well because it, it also is about boys and we did a program about boys pretty much uh, Father's Day I believe we talked more about boys but and we're gonna continue to have these types of programs because they are needed we if when our black lives matter we have to stop killing each other we have to learn to love one another we have to learn to sharpen each other's tools 
mm-hmm. because it's so important and it's vital. Well, unfortunately, I mean, we we see a pattern uh, in the inner city where you do have parents that curse their children or or curse at them yes. in such a negative, uh, derogatory, demeaning, belittling kind of a way, and that sticks to the child into their teenage years, it into does. their adulthood. Uh, the mother probably didn't know how to parent because of how her parents Parenting. raised them. It's a pattern, mm-hmm. a generational pattern that keeps going over and over and over again, and we see it perpetuated damn near every night on television with the reality shows, Absolutely. black women oh, arguing with really? each other every night, calling fighting each with each bees. other every night, calling each other the bitch, calling yeah. each other, don't you, you mess with my this, man, don't do this, that. don't do that. It's a it's a uh, it's 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 a it's an ongoing pattern that many black women in the inner city think it's cute. Well, yeah, many of them do. Right. And it's not. And they gravitate towards and it. And yeah, and they and you're exploiting your children because I saw this on Facebook where somebody had this little child on here saying uh I'm M F T I D E. I D E. I mean, you're not even training your children the appropriate language. You want them to go out and get a job in this society when you should be teaching them to become self-employed, yes. of course, because we need to become entrepreneurs. Absolutely. We need to learn your own how leaders. to be a leader yourself. Absolutely. That's important. And when you're on as an adult and you're on Facebook or any social media exploiting your child, a little toddler, that's a disgrace. So where does the black life matter in that instance? Because you know what you're doing? You are doing what the award-winning filmmaker Raheem Shabazz said, who was also on our show, that you are setting your child up for from school to prison pipeline. pipeline. Absolutely. That's exactly Absolutely. what you're doing, parents. So if black lives matter to you, you need to start acting like it. What do you think has happened in our community? I mean, has anybody literally dropped the ball on us? Or uh, what is happening and why can't we get the inner city right? Well, I have several <laughs> theories about that. I think the major thing is I don't really feel that the generation above us really understands how bad off we are. Mm-hmm. I think they look at it, they see it, and they think that it's fixable, and I just really feel like we're all responsible. I think pastors, churches are responsible. I really just don't think that we're doing what we need to be doing in this community. And most of us, and I don't want to say most of us because I don't drive in and drive out anymore, but I have at some point you know, just felt like it wasn't my problem. And I think that's how many of our older people feel. And I think that's why most of the organizations as well as churches continue to function in this old, Mm. this old mindset. And we are, we are on, on our way to hell in a handbag, like very, (laughs) very quickly. (laughs) If we don't do something to curtail the behavior because social media is at their fingertips and they think it's cute to fight. Uh, the girls that are on TV, like you said, Housewives of Atlanta, all that stuff, that's what our children are latchkeying themselves to. Oh, so if gosh. your mother is at work from 9 to 5 and she comes home and she's tired and all you've had an opportunity to do all week is play the TiVo and take a look at women fighting, that is what becomes your yeah. mindset. And then right. that becomes your conversation that's with your right. girlfriend. That's right. And when you're talking, did you see so-and-so's this Absolutely. and this? And so that's what our kids are actually yeah. modeling their lives right. after. And I see it just all day. They're just... Yeah. They want to be just like that. It's a media uh, programming, if you will. Mm -hmm. Uh, We all know television is... And it's by design. That's right. It's it's by design (laughs) to, um, I guess, uh, habitually show these kind of images to black girls, Latin girls. We see them all on television every day. And it becomes their... uh, It becomes a part of their subconscious... Because they see it over and Absolutely. over and over and over and over yes. again. Yes. So they have no, they they don't even realize that they're doing the action because it's so um, ingrained in them to do it every single day. Mm-hmm. They see no problem with it. No, so why should you? <laughs> you know? And you can't be, as you said in the, uh, the, the video clip, so eloquently said, you can't be, I don't know, I'm paraphrasing, what you can't see. Right. And, and that's a problem. 
Because when you are not leading by a positive example, how do you expect your child to lead? And like you said, a mother said, and I've heard other uh, counselors and so forth say the same thing. They'll tell you, well, if you don't like what I'm doing, you take the bitch or take, you know. And, and when you say these kind of things, this is your child that you brought into the world. And this is reflecting on you as a parent because it tells me that you feel you have no self self worth as well. Absolutely. And if you think you don't have any self worth, how do you think you're going to instill in your child self worth? They need a mentor. Mentor yeah. is, mentoring is so vital. Absolutely. And I'm so glad that uh, the League of Negro the um, I don't want to say it wrong. National, <laughs> National, Council, National, Council. National Council of Negro Women has taken on incorporated this because it's necessary. Absolutely. We need our girls to respect themselves. And how can you, when the parents are out here, some of the parents are even getting in on the fights. Oh, yes. And <laughs> I get that all the time at the schools. The schools tell us, you know what, we can't get an African-American parent to come to a parent-teacher conference or come to a back-to-school night. But the minute there's a fight or a disturbance oh, they're there at the school, they're, they're, they're there in a heartbeat. They're there in a heartbeat. And so those are the type of things that we're addressing. And the reason why we're focusing on girls, because you mentioned this a little bit a, a, a while ago, um, you know, there's this whole My Brother's Keeper. There's an initiative, and there's always been things for boys, and people mm -hmm. don't think so. But when you look at the the structures of after-school programs, most of them are geared around basketball, football. They are. All of the stuff that has to deal with boys. Absolutely. But the girls are just kind of falling by the wayside. They are. But if we really started looking long-term strategically, Every little girl in this city, in every city somewhere, is going to eventually grow up and That's give right. birth to either a girl or a boy. That's right. And if we begin to raise them or instill the right things in them, when they begin to grow up, maybe they may not get it from mom right away, but we're working on those things as well. But it'll give them some foundation to begin to grow and start to think of the right things. So maybe when they finally have those children, that there's something... Uh, that they can do to, to begin to curb that behavior. And that's what we're trying to do. And that is our long-term strategic plan because every girl is going mm -hmm. to do, in some kind of way, have an effect on somebody that's coming through this city in the next 20, 30 years. Oh, right. yes. And, and so, we have to do our part. That's why absolutely. I do this show. I don't have any sponsors, any advertisers at this point. We've only been on air for a little over a year now. But we've had some awesome guests on oh, the yeah. show some amazing guests from across the globe and we don't even look for guests because people want to get their truth out because of their experience <clears throat> their expertise they want to make a difference in the world we have lots of humanitarians that want to make a difference and uh to mention one dr umar johnson has a special program to help boys to uh learn respect learn protection, learn how to treat. And when you talk about HIV and uh, the AIDS and STDs and personal development, that's what he's doing with his school. I mean, with his, this, well, it's kind of like a school. He's going to start a school too, I believe. But Dr. Umar Johnson is doing those things to help boys because his thing is once you teach the boys the way, the girls will have to follow. Okay. Because Absolutely. first of all, they're looking to these little boys. Oh, you know, they start looking and when they get to be a certain <laughs> age and so forth. So when you teach these boys that they are the protector, they're supposed to be the leader, take care of their families, automatically the girls will start to fall into place too. Yes. But it's still vital that we continue to teach our girls and help them to understand uh, this bullying that's going on and how to love yourself and the, the domestic violence. Because some of these girls are beaten by these boys and some of them think that's okay. And it's starting very young. Mm -hmm. and something Younger else, and younger too. Younger and younger. And the other issue that we are taking a blind eye to and I'm saying our society is the new the sex trafficking mm. um yes. these girls are being prostituted at a very early age because someone is teaching the boys how to go to junior high school be friend have girlfriends and they're actually having sex with other little boys um and and this is supposed to be their girlfriend that they're doing this with mm. and so there's just so many things that we've taken a blind eye to in our community and it is really getting out of hand and so when you have promiscuous children at 11 and 10 and 9, um, 
it's a huge situation and yeah we never hear it's, about it's uh sex trafficking uh well we rarely hear about it in mainstream but it it's good that you have this as part of what you uh teach or or as part of your program right we you have know? uh dr reverend mans and she is with the virtuous woman and her expertise is sex trafficking so what we did in a sense is just take the organizations and let them focus on specifically what they do. So when we bring that module, we have that expert to right. handle that. Yeah. We're not recreating anything that we're just taking from program to program. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, if you mind, uh, we have the Virtuous Woman, <coughs> which is sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. right. We have Girls and Gangs. They're dealing with the Girls and Gangs. We have Positive Results. Good. They're dealing with uh, the cyberbullying. Facebook and those sorts of things. We have Millionaire Minds, and that's myself teaching financial literacy. Uh, we did a piece this summer through the mayor's program with the Summer Night Lights at mm -hmm. the Imperial Courts Housing Project. Mm -hmm. The kids have fun with learning about money. So the kids in our program might not be asking for Jordans as much as the other kids because <laughs> right. I made them pay for it themselves and they didn't want That's it after good. they had See? to pay for it. <laughs> right. So we do things like that. We have Youthful jo Joy Foundation, which is a doctor that talks about health and wellness. And we just have the wellness station, again, HIV and AIDS. We have Foster's Future. There is a huge population of foster children mm. that... Uh, need to be handled in our cities. We're going to talk about that next cities. week. We have a guest coming on. We're going to be talking about some of the foster kids, the drugging of them, and okay. all the mental aspect of that. Absolutely. And we have Made by the Image of You, and it's just talking Not about... next week, I'm sorry, week after. Week after next. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just talking about positive imagery. What you see in Hollywood doesn't necessarily have to be <laughs> who you are. So right. we do Absolutely. that through Made by the Image of You. We have the Black Lawyers Association. They focus on our girls who have children so they do the parenting but then they do the parenting for our parents mm -hmm. um, so we have that and then we have the Genesee Foundation domestic violence and we have foundation for second chances which is working on our follow-up which is going to be a two-year mentorship program so after the girls finish our 13 modules we'll be passing them to the uh, foundation for second chances and they have a mentorship program that they already do flawlessly that we're going to keep the program going so we'll have aftercare mm -hmm. for them that is so important and you got you really have some uh, very informative programs I like all the programs that you have and something you mentioned I want to mention again because I am uh, sick and tired of religion claiming to be of God and love yet we can't even come together collectively in the community. You got a church on almost every corner. You got two or three in the middle of the block. And yes, still, why do we have all these churches? It seems like the pastors can't <laughs> even get along. That's why we have so many churches. Oh. So what we got to do is collectively, I mean, religious leaders have access to black people more than anybody in the world on Sundays, Saturdays, and Wednesdays. Absolutely. Yet... We are still struggling in our communities, and we have some of these mega churches in the ghetto, liquor stores running rampant, can't even find a decent grocery store. So we need a call to action to these clergy who claim that they believe and teach God is love. Where is the God is love in all of this separatism with the ministers? That's what I'd like to know. Absolutely. Where is it? And we need you to come together as the religious, because I believe more in spirituality, because religion seems to be filled with so much greed. And it's a business, actually. Well, I have just recently put a call out to all the first ladies at the churches to actually step up and let's step out in the community and make a positive impact on the girls right there in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So the National Council of Negro Women View Park section is coming after first ladies Good. to make sure that they are stepping up and becoming a part of the solution and not a part of the problem. Yes. Because I don't think anymore uh, our new generation, we're not into the hats. We're not into the <laughs> tees. We need to get to the nitty gritty and get our hands dirty and do the work in our communities. Our black children, black families are going to be non-existent. Real, Absolutely. real if soon, we don't step if we up don't to the do plate and do something. And we have this thing about racism, R-A-C-I-S-M. But there's a thing called R-A-I-S-E-I-S-M, raise -ism. And, and it takes a village. 
We yes. shouldn't sit back and just wait on the biological parent to come to do the job because many of them are incarcerated. Let's face it. Our for-profit prison system, by design again, that school-to-prison pipeline is there to receive our children, and we have to wake up and not allow this to happen. Absolutely. And it needs to come from everybody because I know a lot of, I've heard some people I know that's my age, oh, I'm old and this. I mean, get up off of your tired old self. You might not feel so old if you got up and did something. (laughs) But if you're not going to do anything but sit up and watch TV and somebody else building their empire Mm -hmm. when these children are our future, who do you think are going to help us? You're going to slap your parents in a nursing home or something and just leave them there to be abused? Well, you know what? The way it's going, if they're looking at the kids on the street that I'm looking at, they are going to be headed to a convalescent <laughs> home because they are not going to be at home to take care of them. Right. But with that said, I do want to say that uh, Congresswoman Karen Bass held an e- uh, event a couple of weeks ago, and it's the new girls' prison to pipeline. And there is a major girls' uh, prison to, pi- mm-hmm. to pipeline happening yes. right now. And it's th- a lot of it, again, is stemming from foster care and just the poor parenting. Yeah. And they know that it's happening. And they're making way for thousands and thousands of girls to hit the prison system of because course. because they go it's to waiting. They, well they're <laughs> actually starting in junior high because of course there are certain things that other their counterparts would get reprimanded for at school but we're getting arrested for yeah. so there are several other things that are going on so it's all we just by design really need people to take wake a look up at it. wake yes, up and we're going to take a quick a quick break and then we're going to come back and wrap it up and we're going to talk a little bit more about financial literacy because that is huge Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, Naja Roberts is our special guest today. We will be right back. Don't you go nowhere. <laughs> Hello, world. Hey, it's the one year anniversary of Aim to Purpose, the radio show. So, first, we thank the staff at Global Voice Broadcasting for the platform and the opportunity. Go to gbbstudios.com forward slash show forward slash A2P. Next, we thank our wonderful guests that have graced the airwaves of Aim to Purpose over the past year, like Dr. Caldwell B. Esselstyn from the documentary Forks Over Knives, Nazir Alim Bey with his soon-to-be-released documentary entitled Melanin, The God Particle, from the Citizens Commission on Human Rights, Dr. Jeffrey A. Shaler, and Professor Baron K. Brown, who's become a regular on the show. Internationally, we've had guests such as Bridget Nkuna and Sarah Jane Farrell from South Africa, award-winning author F.T. Camargo from Brazil, Brenda Pierce, the empowered nurse from Canada, double Olympic medalist from the British cycling team Brian Steele, and many other great guests that have openly shared their knowledge, humor, wit, and wisdom with the A2P universe. And most important, we thank you, the listening and viewing audience, for tuning in each and every Monday. Information is power, and the more our audience grows, the more open minds that will receive the information, which makes all of us powerful. So we encourage all of you to spread the word about Aim to Purpose, the radio show. Lastly, if you know someone with a product, business, or foundation that's interested in advertising as a sponsor for the show, contact A2P host Louise Hicks at louisehicks.biz or Shamika Brown at divinebrownmedia.com. Be a part of the A2P movement, as there is always power in numbers of like minds that multiply. And follow us on social media at aim to purpose hashtag A2P. Once again, thank you all from Aim to Purpose, the radio show. Hello, world. We're back. And in the few minutes we have left, we want to talk just a little bit about job preparedness and uh, financial uh, literacy, because that's huge, because we know that our educational system here in America that was designed by the Rockefellers is not geared toward helping anybody to learn about finances and how to even create your own budget and assess yourself to become an entrepreneur, just like Barry Gordy and everybody. You got to work for other people for a while, but 
learn how to work for yourself. So what program do you all have quickly in the few minutes we have left uh, for job preparedness? And I know you did mention financial literacy. Well, right now with our job preparedness, we are dealing with uh, two sisters that are out of Lamert Park and they have an organization <coughs> that they actually are teaching the girls about one of them one of them is an attorney and they're actually teaching girls about just forward looking where they want to be and what their lifestyle should look like and if their lifestyle looks like this this is the career that they need to go into and so they're talking with the girls letting them know on a daily basis uh, what they need to be doing to prepare to do that so they do the vision boards and those mm -hmm. sort of things um, and it's just an absolutely wonderful um, organization that they have and so they help the girls with that so as far as financial literacy I'm just really trying to get the girls to open their mind and see how many people come in and make money off of us in our community. Mm. So one of the first yes. things I did with the girls is I had them go into the, the local store with their clipboards and write down all the things that they like to buy and how much they cost. Then we went back into the classroom and we researched what those things cost wholesale. And the girls got an opportunity to really see how much money that the corner store is making off that little ice cream they're selling you for $2.25 right. that they've got for 25 cents mm -hmm. and so the girls beca began to get angry <clears throat> because they started That's to right. understand that they're spending all of their mm -hmm. money when they don't have to because if they were the business owner and they were the one making that kind of money so it just it just started to get them thinking right. and I also just did a real quick exercise with them in which I gave them the monopoly money and I told them okay you're at you're getting off work here's your paycheck and so what we're going to do is we're going to go home but before we go home we got to fill up with gas so we're pulling over I need you to give me $40 so they got it quick the girl starts saying <laughs> I'm not driving no car I'm catching a bus I said well you need a bus pass so instead of giving me 40 mm. you need to give me 100 for the month and so right. they were just like you know so they started to find out as we Absolutely. went down the road hey your kids need groceries you need to buy this so I need money so some of the kids elected not to pay light bills and they had to go sit in the dark and it was mm -hmm. just different things to help them understand that money doesn't grow on trees and if you're not budgeting and figuring right. things out and so those are the type of activities that we do with the girls that really open up their eyes and enlighten them and by the time they're leaving they don't want the Jordans that <laughs> They're just going to pay less and they'll do Absolutely. some other things. So. Because there are ways. Go to yeah. Goodwill. Go to thrift stores. You can Absolutely. buy you a nice, beautiful blouse. Looks brand new for a dollar or two. Absolutely. That's what you got to learn. And I, I love what you've uh, said and summed it up because those are the elements of my aim to purpose um, uh, campaign is vision, hope, faith, knowledge, and action. And that's what you're doing with these girls. You're giving them a vision. You're giving them hope. You're giving them faith. You're giving them the knowledge to go out and act upon that knowledge. Because if you have the knowledge and you're not putting it in action, it's not working. It's not going to work. Absolutely. And that's what success is all about. And I, I love what you're doing. So in the final minutes we have left, why don't you uh, tell us how to get in touch if anybody wants to participate in your program, how can they do it, and some final thoughts. Absolutely. Well, you can get involved with our organization by going to our website. It is NCNW ncnwviewpark.org and on that website it gives all the names of our collaborative partners it tells you about our monthly meetings which are held every third Saturday of the month our National Council of Negro Women uh, Council House is located on 54th and Crenshaw and we would love to have you come out we're looking for new vibrant idealistic future forward visionary looking <laughs> minds to just yes. move this city forward and move our program forward so you can also give us a call at area code 323-457-9862 and again that's 323-457-9862 and we would love to speak with you about how you can become a part of what we're doing to create change and again our motto is girls cannot be what they cannot see mm. so go. true <laughs> so with that, we well, I, I like this little quote here before we end. Uh, it says, wisdom is knowing what to do. Knowledge is knowing how to do it. Success is doing it. Absolutely. So true. <laughs> Love that. I like that. Love that. Let's say it one more time. Wisdom, wisdom. is knowing what, what to, to do. do. Yes. Wisdom is knowing what to do. Knowledge is knowing how to do it. Success is doing, doing it. it. Love it. Love it. 
Yep. And with that being said, thank you so much for coming in thank you. today, yes. Nigel Roberts from the um, National Council, National of, Negro Women. Council <laughs> View of Park Negro Section. Women, View yes. Park Section. Section. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank and you. we're going to have you back next year. Oh, absolutely. Uh, to talk about this some more because this is a subject that we really need to talk about. And we're going to get more specific. We're going to stay on it. And with that being said, always remember your power lies within you. Let it loose until next week. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's affect some change. <laughs>